Well, here we are in section 5.8, uh, analyzing grass of polynomials. And this is the thing that kind of pulls the whole chapter together, is all the stuff we've been doing and the graphing, and it kind of puts them both in, in one big piece, really chapter 4 and chapter 5 combined. So um, when we look at this, when we start looking at this, they talk about local maxes and local mins. And really when we're talking about a local max is if we have a graph that does this and then does this and then kind of goes that way forever and ever and always. The local max would be this. Even though it's not the actual max because the max is going to go to infinity forever, it's the local max. And obviously when, when we go down here and we talk about local min, we're talking about right here, that bottom. Even though this is going to go on forever and ever and always, um, that's that local min. Let's, let's take a look at... Uh, zeros and solutions and all this stuff here. So uh, the f of x equals all of this gobbledygook, right? a sub n, x to the n, plus a sub n minus 1. Big, big long thing. Uh, let's uh, let that be a polynomial function. If k is a real number, then the following statements, then the following statements are equivalent. k is a zero of the polynomial function f. Therefore, a factor would be x minus k. We've talked about that a bunch. All right? So if 2 is one of the zeros, then x minus 2 would be one of the factors. A solution would be k. We call that a solution to the function f of x equals 0. And an x-intercept would also be k, and it would intersect at k0. And these are all kind of repeater things that we've learned slowly, but now they're putting them all together. Let's take a look at example one, see if we can put all of that stuff together in one, one big problem. So it says graph the function 1 fourth x plus 1 squared times x minus 4. Some things I know about it. I know it's a third degree polynomial. I know the leading coefficient is positive. So in section 5.2, we learned that it's going to do one of these, right? It's going to have, um, it's going to go off this way and it's going to go down this way. The intercepts, because negative 1 right here and positive 4 are zeros, I can plot the point negative 1, uh, 0, and 4, 0. And so I'm going to go negative 1, 0 and drop a dot there. 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm going to drop a dot there. The one thing I noticed, though, was that negative 1 was a double zero. You see that two right there? So when this graph comes in and it's going to touch right there, but it's going to go back down. It's going to dive back down. And then it's going to come back up right through the four, and it's going to go like that. So I try to go through the four. I make that line thick enough. It'll go right through there. And so I don't really have to plot all these points that, that they're asking me to plot. I could put that on my calculator. I could look at the table. Um, however I want to do that, let's see what the calculator does with that kind of a problem real quick. If I turn it on and go to my y equals, I'm going to call that 0.25 just for the sake of time, 1 fourth. And x plus 1 to the second power times x minus 4, what you'll see right away when you, um, let's all go to zoom standard again so we all have the same looking picture. You'll see it goes up, touches, and goes right back. And if I didn't know where that was, uh, if I, they wanted me to fill out a table, let's say on a test or something, my calculator does that. I just go up to negative 2, and then I can fill in this whole table. Um, so there's the, there's the table, um, negative 2, then I go to 0, and so on and so forth. So that makes that kind of easy. And that's all you really have to do in that situation. Um, the end behavior, remember we talked about that. We said uh, because f has three factors, right, that it was, gonna, it was going to behave like one of these curves like this. I wish I drew that a little nicer now. But it's going to come up and touch and then go back that way. That's supposed to be a little nicer curve. You saw the curve on your ear. Here, for a better picture, look right here. There you go. There's a better picture. That's me drawing. How about I draw over top of that, see if I can trace it. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. 
a beautiful artiste. And so when you, when you have that picture, we knew all of the, those things that I talked about and you have them all set. Can you guys take a minute and do checkpoint number one? Let's pause the video. All right, welcome back. Let's see. We have a positive leading coefficient. We have a third degree polynomial. That means n behaviors are going to do this. Um, I'm going to go through positive 2, negative 1, and positive 1. So I'm going to come up, and I'm going to go through here, and I'm going to go back down through here, and I'm going to come up through here, and I'm going to go out this way. And again, I hope you put that on your uh, calculator, and that would tell you what to do. The graph of uh, turning points of a polynomial function. The graph of every polynomial function has degree n, has at most n minus 1 turning points. So you see this is a 3 degree polynomial. Turning point, it was going up, 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 down, down, down. Turning point right there. Let's make that a different color so we can mark it. A dark red right there. That's a turning point. Where's my other turning point? Right here. So I'm going up, up, down, down. Up, up. It has two turning points. That's three minus one turning points. Moreover, if a polynomial function has n distinct real zeros, then its graph has exactly n minus one turning points. So if it, if it says these are the real zeros, then you know you're going to have n minus one turning points. So let's take a look at that. Graph the function. So if you, if you look at this whole thing, you, when you look at that entire function um, and they ask you to graph it, well, you can graph it. You can use your graphing calculator or whatever. What you need to know is what's your graphing calculator tell you? The graphing calculator, notice that the graph of f, notice that the graph of f has three intercepts. See them? One, two, three intercepts. And how many turning points? Well, it's going up. Now it's coming down. It's going down, now it's coming up. So up, down, up. It has two turning points. Use the graphing calculator zero, maximum, and minimum features to approximate the three coordinates of these points. All right, about time. They told us to start using technology here. So I'm going to go to my y equals, clear this out, and I'm going to have x to the third minus 4x squared plus 6. And I graph that. And my picture looks exactly like the one on the calculator. I'm going to find the zero, so I'm going to do second, calculate. What do you think I want to calculate? A zero. Go to the left of where I think that zero is. See, I think that zero is right there. So I'm going to go to the left of it. I'm going to go to the right of it. Push enter. And I have that. Negative 1.08613. All right, a little gnarly looking. So we're going to write that over here. Um, the x-intercepts, one of them is negative 1.086. That's close enough. All right, let's take a look at what we have next. Um, I'm going to find the other zeros. So I go over here. Stay to the left of this one. Enter, enter, enter. My other one is 1.57. All right, so I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to go 1.57. Boy, these numbers don't mean much to me right now. I hope they mean something to me in a minute. And then I want to go ahead and find that third zero. So calculate to stay to the left of it, enter, enter, and Take a guess. Uh, 3.51. All right. Let's write that down over here. 3.51. So I have that written down. And now I have to calculate those maximums. Now the maximum, I go to second, calculate a maximum. I'm going to go to the left of this max point right here. I'm going to go to the right of it. And all this is doing is it's trying to determine what the highest point is between those two arrows. Now my x value looks to be 0. Negative 0.26 times 10 to the negative 6 bar. So that's 0. 
two six, pretty close to zero. So I'm just going to say six is that max point. All right, I'm going to write six right here, six. So I have it, and let's find the other one. Second, cal calculate a minimum, and then we'll go all the way over here. Enter, enter, enter. And I have um, 2.6, so that's 2 and 2 thirds on the x, but what I'm really worried about is this negative 4.8. So I'm going to write that right here. Negative 3.48. All right. So I found all the points they asked me to find. Um, and so it says the x intercepts are. And these are what they are. The function has a local maximum at 0, 6, and a local minimum at um, 2.67 and negative 3.48. Negative 3.48. All right? And then you just do that same thing um, with this next graph. So you would go through all the same motions again. Let's take a look at that checkpoint real quick. And you guys go ahead and try to do that checkpoint. All right, let's see what you got. Should have got an x-intercept at, um, let's do x-intercepts, were at negative 2.66 and negative 0.89. Or your x-intercepts. Your local max, you should have a local max at 0, 4. And look, I, um, 0, 4, because this is a plus 4, right? And that, that is your y-intercept. So you're always going to have that at 0, 4, just like on that other one was at 6 because, um, because that was its y-intercept. And the local minimums here, we had negative 2, negative 8, and 1.25. and 0.58. And those are your points. So I hope you got those. If you didn't, we can talk about it tomorrow. We'll see you then. Thank you.